Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to talk about feeding now. Uh, in this part of the world, uh, what we do is feed our bees in the fall and typically not again in the spring. So we'll sort of focus on uh, just fall feeding like that. And when we're feeding in the fall, we're trying to uh, get a large amount of feed in as quickly as possible. We have a pretty narrow window uh, in the fall to, after we've harvested the honey to get the feed in before the weather gets cold. We want to feed the bees when all the field bees, the summer bees, are still alive, where there's a large population of bees that are able to take that syrup down, ripen it, uh, they uh, invert the sugar, uh, the sucrose into glucose and fructose. So that takes them a bit of time and energy, and we want to use those summer bees to do that job. So for right around here, we're feeding in the latter part of September, and that's a, an ideal time. We get the honey off right uh, after the goldenrod flow is finished and then feed immediately. Uh, we try to feed about four imperial gallons per colony, so it's quite a large amount of syrup, and that's two to one sugar syrup. Uh, if you're not able to make up two to one sugar syrup, it's not a big deal, just make it up as thick as you can and feed them uh, proportionally of a similar amount. So we'll talk over the different methods now. Uh, the one method I'll, I'll mention is a frame feeder. So this feeder replaces a frame uh, and you put that in place of the outside frame here. You pull that frame out and insert this feeder there. Some people put straw or chicken wire in here to help the bees uh, uh, not drown inside there. But you can only put about a gallon in there so you would need to fill it four times to get them through the fall. So that's not my preference. Works pretty good for spring feeding if you're uh, wanting to be doing that. So that's the frame feeder. Uh, next method we're going to mention is the a pail feeder. This is a pretty commonly used method. For that you need an inner cover with a hole in it. And you put that inner cover on. And then you fill up your pail full of sugar syrup. This is empty right now, but you would turn it over and it doesn't actually run out, just a little bit runs out and then it's, uh, uh, it's held in by vacuum pressure. So you turn that over and you place it over top of that hole. We just have a little look here. This one has a screen on it. This is a commercially made pail feeder. But some people just drill a bunch of small holes in, the, uh, in a lid and that works pretty well too. So we'll put that over this way. The bees can get up and get at that. And then just to protect that, we put an empty box around it. And then a, a hive lid goes on top of that. So now we're done. We've got that feeding's done. This method works pretty well, but it's rather slow. So it's also not my favorite method. Uh, We'll go on to one more method here before we talk about my all-time favorite method, which is called barrel feeding. So the next method we've got here is a hive top feeder. This is a wooden box with a slot built into the middle so the bees can come up through that into these two tanks here. So we set that on the hive like so, and this will hold four gallons, so it'll hold a lot of syrup and we can fill it up all at once and that's enough going to be enough for the bees to winter on. So we just pour our syrup in and I like to dribble just a little bit of syrup down that slot there just to get them going coming up to look for that syrup. But a lot of bees would drown in there. And some hive top feeders have covers and floats and so on. I prefer to just use straw. The straw gives them a nice float to climb on and they can come right up through this slot, get out onto the straw, get moving around, and they'll take that syrup down in a matter of, you know, a week, three or four, four or five days a week, somewhere like, something like that all depending on how warm the temperatures are. The warmer it is, the faster they can take it down. Once they take it down, they have to ripen it, as I've mentioned. So warm temperatures help them evaporate that. If they don't get it evaporated properly, it will ferment in the comb 
and that uh, causes sickness. Of course, we would then cover that up and come back in a week or so and take that, uh, that hive top feeder off. Uh, the last method I want to talk about is barrel feeding and that's what we actually do here for the most part. We take a 40 gallon barrel and we fill it, or for, sorry, 45 gallon barrel, we fill it with 40 gallons. So that leaves a little bit of space at the top. We put loose straw on that top there and then we prop the lid up a little bit with a stick running under the lid. Put some bricks on there so that it doesn't blow out, the lid doesn't blow off. And that lid keeps the rain from getting in and causing the honey to ferment. But the bees will come and find that. We'll sometimes leave an excluder there or something to give a bit of scent to it to attract them to the barrels. And uh, very quickly, they find where that is. They come back and they do round dances, tell all the other bees to get out and get looking. And it gets to be a real frenzy. Uh, they can take that syrup down in three days. So what we're feeding 100 hives in this location. We'll set up 10 barrels. We put a 140 gallon barrel out for every 10 colonies and that, that's down in three days. It's amazing how quickly they can move that syrup uh, in and, and, and get it uh, into position in their hive. The, um, some people think that's maybe not a good idea. It might encourage robbing. I totally disagree with that. It actually prevents robbing because the bees get all the food they need very quickly and they're not interested in robbing after that. They're not interested in checking each other out uh, for, for food or even uh, it does prevent them from robbing at our honey house as well. Uh, so they're le way less of a nuisance if we get them barrel fed and they're done. It's like the getting, they just can't get up one more time to go to the buffet table. They're done. And so it's, it's a really good method for, for feeding bees. Uh, so there you go. There's a few methods about uh, uh, feeding bees. And uh, you have to choose what works for you. Uh, but uh, all, all of them will work fine. Just uh, play around a little bit and see what works for you. Thanks for watching. So today we're just going to finish up with uh, overwintering your colonies and how to prepare them for the winter. So we've already um, talked about any sort of medication and disease control you're going to have to do in the fall and also feeding your bees. So we're going to pretend this hive is a well fed, uh, treated hive, ready to go into winter. We're also going to pretend that it's not a 32 degree July day. Um, so right now we're kind of talking late October, early November. Um, so our bees are kind of shut down for the year, it's getting pretty darn cold. Um, we're ready to shut her down for the year. So, uh, all our hives are down to just single brood chambers now or double brood chambers. Um, just lid, inner cover, and, and again, the brood chamber and the bees. So that's what we've gotten things down to. Um, well, with the first little bit of equipment we use during the winter is what's called an entrance reducer or a mouse guard. Um, and that just simply goes in the entrance to re exactly do what it sounds like it should do, reduce the entrance. Uh, but it also, what it does is protect uh, the bees from having mice pop in from the outside and into the colonies. So this will just slide on in. We'll try not to squish any bees. It should just slide right on into the front of that hive uh, and re really reduce that entrance sound so that the bees can kind of control the cold air that's kind of coming into the colony. And uh, also, especially late fall, this, it's a good idea to reduce these entrance downs to, to deal with any sort of robbing. It's a lot easier for the bees to sort of guard that little bit of territory than it is that whole width of that entrance. So we put in our entrance reducer, that's our first thing. If you're using a screen bottom board, um, there is an opening at the back and when it comes into winter and, and the wind in the winter time, the last thing we want is cross ventilation. So an opening at the back, which would be a regular entrance and then, or sorry, at the front and an opening at the back. And that just allows wind to blow right on through there without the bees being able to control that. So with that screen bottom board, you're gonna have to plug it up somehow. So this is just a beveled back block uh, that just fits in that hole. If you don't have a screen bottom board, you don't have to worry about it, but that would just simply fit in the hole at the back. Um, that's pretty easy to do. So just plug that up. When you're talking about overwintering bees. So we talk about them being able to ventilate and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's very, one of the biggest things uh, you're going to need is an upper entrance. So if you're using a wooden uh, inner cover, it, has, it should have a little notch on one side and you're going to want to flip that to open. 
Uh, we don't use that here. You've seen in a lot of the videos, we use this little cloth in our cover. Um, so for that, we have upper entrances drilled into all our boxes here. But this time of year, it's very important that, that we have those upper, upper entrances. First for ventilation. Uh, during the winter, the bees will ventilate um, and you know push air through the colony and for whatever you know purpose they need. Uh, but the second big thing is to to get rid of condensation and humidity. Uh, sorry, get rid of humidity so it doesn't really condense. Um, these bees are, are you know breathing a lot of humid air is coming out, and if all that really warm moist air is really hitting a really cold surface up top, uh, it can condense and start dripping down on your bees. Uh, so anything that we can, so the bees really need an upper entrance in order to push that out, and we're trying to keep that upper end, the top part of that hive, as least cold as we can possibly do just to help avoid with that. Those are your two two big ones is, is airflow and condensation. So we've got that upper entrance. If again we've got it drilled but if you had the wooden inner cover you just have that board flipped to, to open. Uh, the next little bit is some sort of insulation. So this is some old roofing insulation. Um, the, the only sort of insulation you don't really want to put on your hive is anything that can suck up moisture. Um, I know it's it's a good idea. People seem to think that um, you want to draw moisture away from the bees, but you can just imagine after five six months in this colony, all that moisture being wicked up into those into that insulation, wood shavings or whatever, um, it can get pretty damp and soggy and can kind of get moldy and not not do the job uh, for the bees. So you want some sort of insulation that won't mix wick moisture, and you can put that right on top of your colony. And again, that, that just keeps that top from getting too, too cold and having that warm air meet that, a very cold top. Uh, and then the, the next thing is your winter wrap. Uh, so there's a variety of different winter wraps, uh, but typically anything black is pretty darn good. Uh, these are corrugated plastic uh, and are actually what we recommend here. They're available through the Waterloo County Beekeepers Association um, and they're they're just awesome wraps. They're very cost effective, very durable. Um, haven't had to throw out one yet. Um, and very easy. They just fold on up and uh, to store them, as, it's very simple. But we'll put that wrap on. Just goes over the front. And then what we do is just fold up these flaps on top of that insulation. Put on our lid. And now the lid is made for a standard brew chamber box. Um, and now that we've got this insulation on, it's not going to fit. So what we really want to do is get that back of the lid on tight and slide it forward. That way it is on a bit of an angle sloping back. So any sort of that, the rain slash snow uh, that's going to be pelting this lid will just kind of slop off the back and we won't have to deal with a big pile up of that sort of stuff in front of the colony. Um, so we have that tilted to the back. And the last thing, because that lid isn't on there super tight, we just end up putting a brick on top of our colony and we're ready for winter. Say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Happy holiday.